Gig Gab, the show for working musicians for Monday, December 6th, 2021. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab. Welcome back to Gig Gab. If you're already a member of the family, if not, welcome to the family. We are the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. Crazy weekends for us both, my friend. Yeah, I mean, I loved your pictures that you were sharing on Facebook. You looked like you were digging in on those sessions, man. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot to say about uh, the Bitter Pill sessions that we did over the last three days. It was, that was something else. Yeah, how was, uh, you, but you had five gigs in three days, is is that right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So I want to <laughs> tell you about them. That's the right response, by the way. Just, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I started out, with a three hour drive. And then I went to a lunch with, with a booking friend of mine to catch up and, you know, have happy holidays. Sure. And then, and then I went to set up for the bigger gig I was going to have later that night. After we did that, I ran over to a private party and played a short set for the people of that private party. And then I had to leave that party right away to go and get ready and play the the holiday gig I had at the coffee house that we have, Yeah, which was, which was an absolute blast. I mean, it was, you know, it is so soul filling. The musicians are so into it. You know, it's a sold out packed house and, you know, which, you know, there means probably about 65, 70 people. Okay. Um, yep. You know, I got, I had like a great core band and, you know, they killed, they were prepared well. And, and, uh, and then I had some house rockers sit in, including, which was actually very meaningful for me, the three horns that have been with me from day one. So mm. literally the longest tenured people in my band. Yeah. So we got to have a little bit of a holiday moment. Our buddy Barry, you know, flew in from Chicago and took in the show, which was kind of I know. He started texting amazing. me pictures of you and it was like, oh wait, that's you and Chris Preen. Like there you yeah. go. All right. Yep. So uh but a great night. Um got home and I was still kind of buzzed and uh it didn't fall asleep for for quite a while. You know, it took me yeah. a while to come down. Right. And then but the next morning and I didn't sleep great anyway. And then the next morning I got up and I had a breakfast with the guy who's been subbing for the house rockers who I offered the permanent position. Oh, and actually we, exciting. We should, yeah, we should actually, uh, what I'm done telling you about my weekend, a few minutes kind of talk about that, that offer, you know, sure. and, and I'll, what I'll, we I'm, covered. Put, I'm putting it on the agenda for the end. So we don't forget about it. That's right. Good. Yep. Uh, so left that drove right to a 1 PM downbeat, um, uh, one to 4 PM. Uh, great gig at a new winery for me. Some really nice people came out, uh, and it's always so flattering. You know, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of tempering the whole Facebook promotion thing, right? I'm, I'm kind of not in, I see it so much as my timeline has other people's, you know, Facebook promotion. Yeah. I, I really don't want to be part of the noise. So I'm really kind of experimenting to see if less is, can be more when it comes to Facebook book promotion. And right now it sure seems to be. So, uh, so my, my minimal Facebook promotion had a good draw for, for that winery gig turned out to be a good gig. They've asked me back already, which is kind of cool. But then I had to leave there and do about an hour drive to my evening gig, which was a five 30 to eight 30 gig, which was a restaurant resort gig in Santa Cruz, California. Um, nice and relaxed, you know, I, uh, Although the interesting thing about that is the first time I played this place, it was outside on a covered patio or no, not even a covered patio. It was just a beautiful weather outside patio. Tips were great, right? The two subsequent times, um, I'm kind of in a corner of the restaurant and the tip, it's one of those things where people really have to make an effort to decide they want to walk past all those people to get to where I am to tip. And so the tips have fallen off quite a bit. And so, you know, I'm, I'm rethinking if that's, if that's a good gig for me, but, um, but anyway, then 8.30, I had some local friends who were there, and I actually stayed with them that night. Again, kind of buzz, catching up with them. Didn't sleep great. Got up at 7.30, a quick breakfast by my oh. wonderful host, and then hit the road for a two-hour drive towards my home. So I'm kind of making my way back south yep. uh, uh, to a winery that I love in Paso Robles, California. Oh, yeah. And did did kind of a brunch uh, time, 11 to 2. And uh, it went great. It was a beautiful day. And... Uh, but by the time I got home, I was really feeling just 
my body was tired, my mind was tired, my voice was really tired. And I think my voice was tired because the lack of good sleep more than anything else. Sure. Not like I was screaming. I just think I didn't get enough rest or hydration in order to keep my voice. So I was a little scratchy, you know, for for a good part of the of the Sunday gig. And that and I and I'm was reflecting on it. As exciting as this all is, bounced from gig to gig to gig to gig. The sleep is incredibly important. You know, I'm not digging a ditch here, so it's not like it's the most physical thing in the world. But no, but it's, it's nothing. It's physical. I like that. Yeah. That what you described is a lot. I mean, it, it's kind of like being on the road. You know, it's yeah. it's um, it's a lot because you're you're just you're caught. Con- it's nonstop, right? You're just you're you. The gigs are good. The rest of the time is either grueling work or downtime where you have nothing to do. Right. And I didn't have any of that. So I didn't have any of the boredom that kind of confuses your brain. You know, yeah. that, that your, you know, your energy level is waning and, and I didn't have that. Mine was pretty much bang, 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 bang. And it was thrilling. And it was like, oh, this, this would be an interesting life. And then by the end of it, I was like, <laughs> I, I, I don't. And mostly the biggest thing that was just disappointing of this is I was just so physically tired for, and again, an 11 a.m. downbeat is early. Right. So yeah. I'm, I'm not even entirely awake yet. Um, and I, I just wasn't happy with the qualitative part of what I was able to do on Sunday. And I don't know, I don't know if I, I mean, I'm in better shape now than I certainly have been in the past couple of years. I don't know if there's anything I could do to make that better. Right. Right. Or whether I just can't right. do, I can't do that type of schedule. So five, five gigs in three days, really two and a half days. And, um, uh, but interesting. My, my you know, guess is, were, my guess is you could get, used to it i mean you could get conditioned to do it you you know you did it if you did it for three weeks straight you would i i think you would start to sort of settle into a routine because like at some like, point in time it's why though right like well, you don't need to I, do doubles I, I i we weren't addressing the why we were addressing the, <laughs> the if <laughs> how, how. <laughs> yes <laughs> but i agree with you on the why i mean I, but like when we were on the road I, we fell into a decent routine you know we were playing we would finish playing at like one or two because we were playing bars. I mean, like, you know, some of them larger bars. So nine or ten at night was your downbeat. Yeah, we'd have a nine or ten downbeat for most gigs. We had some gigs that were sixes or sevens and would finish by 11 or midnight or even earlier. We, I think we had a couple that finished at 10 or whatever. But by and large, we, yeah, we would hit it at nine. We would finish by midnight or one usually. We'd pack up our stuff. We'd put it in, you know, we'd load it, load it into the 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 unba the bus mm-hmm. uh and uh and then and then we'd probably you know eat something and chill for a little bit and then i would say by about 3 or 4 was about when I, we would all turn in that's about when i would go to sleep is about 4 a.m. and i i got to a point where i was sleeping really consistently until 10:30 or 11 and and so that was you know that's a lot of sleep especially for me i mean these days i get like 5 or 6 hours of sleep and that's plenty so that was, you know, seven or eight hours of sleep, and which was good because the boredom thing that we glossed over it matters, right? And so managing that is a very important thing, I, I think. You know, I, I come from a long line of, of alcoholics and addiction runs in, in various circles in, you know, my extended family. And so it was like keenly aware of, ah, I see how musicians like on the road <laughs> can fall into this trap because you have nothing to do yeah. all day long. And uh, uh, so so it was just like, oh, manage the board, sleep. You know, I had my computer with me and things like that. But um, but yeah, in terms of sleeping, like we got into a good routine. There would be some nights where we would choose to drive to the next venue uh, and sleep there. But then we would know that like and we would we would bolt. We would do a quick loadout. You know, we wouldn't like lollygag around and we'd have one person on like the merch stand or whatever while the rest of us were just like you know making it happen and getting the stuff on the truck and they're on the on the bus and then and then we would just hit it and drive whatever you know the hour and a half to to the next place and sleep there maybe you know kind of thing so yeah, yeah. but it's it's doable yeah 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 well, it was thrilling and you know I've, I've had busy weeks before i think i've had five and two and a half days that, that was a bit much that's a lot but i'm more reflecting like you know I am um, pick the good gigs, yeah. you know, and, uh, and I think I could do one a day, you know, would not, that'd be just like going to work. But I, I think it was a combination of the lack of sleep, 
Yeah. Probably lack of hydration. I mean, I didn't drink very much. But, um, and then the long drives on the sandwiching on both sides. Although, yeah. when you were on tour, you would you would have, like, would you ever have to drive three, four, five hours between points? Um, sometimes. Generally, it was, it, Maury had built the tour so that we were generally only driving two hours or less between each gig. Uh, two hours seemed to be about the right amount, you know, that 90 minutes to two hour thing, because... Because then you, you were playing to a, a mostly different crowd each night. There were the diehards that would, would like follow you around. And, and, and like that in and of itself is an amazing feeling noticing that mm. like, wait a minute, you know, we've been doing this, but we get paid to do this. These are the people that actually pay us to do this and yeah. they're following us around. I mean, that's humbling and a, a wonderful thing. But, you know, by and large, we had sort of a new crowd each night, which was the point, you know, to, to make sure that we had enough people in the venues and like, you know, most of the gigs were – if not selling out at, you know, 80% capacity or whatever, you know, so it was, it, he had figured it out. I, by the time I joined that band, it was a, a well-oiled machine in terms mm -hmm. of the logistics of it all. And um, so, yeah, yeah. But, but there were those, ah, there was one drive, man. We drove from the, the, oh man, were we in normal Illinois? Yeah. Let's say that. I think that's right on the border of, Dubuque, Iowa, am I, am I getting that right? But anyway, we drove from, it was about a nine hour drive back to Erie, Pennsylvania. And our bass player and I decided to do it overnight. We were, cause we were, it was a weird stretch of the tour. We didn't have the bus. We'd rented a van. I still don't quite understand the, 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 the logic behind why we did what we did, but it's what, it's what we were dealt. And so we wanted to drive back. We were like, we're done with this leg of the tour we get to sleep on the bus. When we get back to the bus, we're going to the bus. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, driving past Cleveland was this blurry moment of like, are we really going to make this happen? And and he and I kept each other awake. We did fine, but it was a stretch. But that was definitely yeah. the longest of those. And definitely, the you know, not recommended. It, you know, you shouldn't be on the road if you're exhausted like that. But that's right. how it goes. I mean, you know, we, we survived, right? That which doesn't kill us. So, yeah. And, th and thankfully didn't kill anybody else. Like no one was harmed in the, uh, in the telling of this story or the creation of this story. So there you go. All yeah. right. So that, that was me, but I, I really want to hear, because again, it looked like you were just having such a blast. I actually, the first question, I don't remember if we talked about this last week, yeah. but you know, on, on the reflection of the way the Beatles go into a studio with just some rough ideas or, you know, whatever varied, you know, finished songs, it, you know, they also don't have budget concerns. Well, what was right. your process? You know, <laughs> did did you have songs that you were done and ready to go? We just need to record them, or were you actually figuring stuff out in the studio? So, uh, it, the answer is yes. Um, we knew what we were doing. We had spent uh, I don't know what five or six weeks ago. I, I think I talked about it on the show here. We came to my studio. We spent an entire weekend together, and it that was our prep time for the studio this past weekend. We learned a bunch of new tunes there. That was the very, very much like what you saw in that get back movie, right? Where people were mm -hmm. just hanging out and learning songs. And, and it was a much more relaxed kind of thing. We were recording them here, although there was no plans to use any of those tracks for anything more than, uh, you know, making sure we didn't forget what we did so that we could go into the studio and, and actually put them down. And they served that purpose amazingly well. Uh, but yeah, we arranged the tunes, we played them through, we, that allowed us to do the sort of first pass of whittling down the, uh, you know, we had probably 30 songs that we could have put on this record. We whittled it down to like 14 and we wound up getting 12 of those tracked this weekend, which was great. Uh, so that was, that was that, that was, I'll call our pre-production work. And then, um, and, and then obviously we went into the studio this weekend with the plan being, to just lay those down. But, you know, nobody, nothing was set in stone. Uh, it, Bitter Pill is is a very collaborative band. Uh, mm -hmm. Extremely co collaborative. And and this weekend was really the culmination of, I mean, it, as, it, as it should be, the culmination of, you know, the past m m several years of us all playing together and knowing each other and learning how to collaborate with each other and trusting each other, which is sort of part of collaboration. And this weekend really became this just very fluid, very productive, creative, collaborative time where all ideas were considered 
we were uh, we were really focused, but but yet relaxed with everything. There was never a moment. I was thinking this morning. There was never a moment where it was like, oh, crap, we have to do that track again. Now, my bandmates may may disagree with me, <laughs> you know, but from my uh, perspective in in the Dave Cave, as we called it, the, the drum isolation room, mm-hmm. uh, I you know, I was never felt like we were grueling through. Oh, my gosh, another track. There's one where, yes, that was the case, but that, that was of my doing. Uh, which I'll I'll tell that story in a minute. But, you know, generally speaking, it was all just very much like, yeah. And our engineer, Chris, who owns the noise floor, it's his studio. He, you know, we were talking about producers last week. He really stepped into the role of uh, being our producer for a lot of things, not everything, but for a lot of things where he would, you know, he'd have ideas sharing, including, you know, like different sections of songs or different arrangements of things or how we should do things. And he really was that in the moment objective ear to what was happening and and um, and really kind of helping us. You know, if there was a moment after we finish a track, it's really hard to be objective about something that you're so deep into, especially like literally as you're playing the part. You think you hear what you think you hear, but you don't know if that's what it actually, you know, came across like. And so we would finish a take and we'd all start talking and uh, and there would clearly be like a thing where it was like, oh, should we have done this? Should we do that? I think this would work better. And then we'd just ask Chris, you know, who was sort of the voice of God in all of our ears, <laughs> like, OK, what, are we perceiving that right? Did we screw that part up or whatever? And he would chime in. He'd be like, yeah, no, I think you're right. You should do that again. Or no, nope, nope, I got it from here. Like, you're fine. You know, th- th- you're done tracking. You, come on back in. Let's give me a minute to slice and dice th- a couple of things to fix those mistakes that are going to drive you crazy. And then we'll we'll play it and go. So he. He was, uh, as he was last time, a, a very important part of the process. But this time he really stepped into, you know, helping us produce this thing. And um, it, it was, you know, we did, we loaded in on Thursday. Uh, we didn't, we, I think we got some drum sounds on Thursday. Uh, we did, if I'm, yeah. And then Friday we went in sort of late afternoon and tracked until about 11. We got three songs done on Friday night. Uh, they were songs that we had been playing live all summer or most of the summer. And so we knew them. Uh, it gave us some confidence going into Saturday, but it also took all of the, you know, quote unquote, easy stuff off the table uh, for Saturday. It meant that we had yeah. to, you know, we had to track the things that we didn't know as well. And so that was going to take a little longer. And But, you know, we got those three, three songs done on Friday, which was great. Um, Saturday... Saturday was a long day. We we got to the studio at about 11 and we left at about 11. Mm. Um, yep. And it, it went great. There was, we, we got, it got to be about, I'll say maybe 8, 30, 9 o'clock. And I could tell Chris was sort of nudging us to, to rap for the day. And we were all like, well, do we have another one in us? And Billy mentioned one tune. We were like, yeah, you know what? We should try it. And, and John, our guitar player, said, you know what? Let's let's get into it. We probably won't get it tonight, but at least that way we'll come in tomorrow not having to start fresh on a new song. We'll have this song in our in our heads and our hands and we'll be able to just, you know, do it. And it's like, OK, great. And it's a relatively simple tune, you know, pretty straightforward song, I should say. And so as I would do is I walked I, I had my little walk of silence between the the main room and the drum isolation room. And I grab my phone and I start listening to the recordings that we made here several weeks before, uh, just to remind myself, Oh, what did I play on this? You know, what were some of these things? And these are tracks that I've been listening to for the last couple of weeks, you know, again, but in the moment, all this stuff sort of goes away. So I was like, Oh, let me refresh myself. And I, you know, and and I was tired, but it was like, we can, we can do this. And I hear the drum part that I had come up with for it. And it was like, Oh crap, that's this one. And it's this, um, it's it's really like three different ostinatos happening at the same time. It's a bluegrass tune. It's a straight ahead blue, bluegrass tune. But I didn't want it to be a straight ahead bluegrass tune like so many of our others. So I figured, well, I, I, I had this idea. Again, we were having a pretty creative moment uh, here when we were crafting these songs. And I came up with this thing and it was like, actually, that works. And so it's just, it's just this crazy part. That's, it was, it's really a, a, a mental and physical exercise to just play, to get my limbs to do all the right things at the right times. 
And it was like, oh my gosh, what have I done to myself? Okay, great. So we start getting into it and it's, it's going okay. And then it just starts getting worse and worse and worse. And we're, but we're having some good ideas uh, through this about, you know, arranging it and some stops and some breaks to make the song, you know, sp sparkle and pop and, and be interesting. And finally we did like two takes of it and they like, they just weren't happening. And I said to the, and I was like really exhausted. I think we all, all were, but you know, certainly speaking for me, I, I was just like not really even able to focus all that well. And I'm like, and it was starting to get into my head, like, can I play this song that I, that I came up with? And I said to Chris, I'm like, we got to do it one more time. And he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, I don't see how doing it one more time is going to help. And he's like, but you, you do you, you know? And uh, I said, yeah, thank you. So we did, we played it one more time. And it, it, this was not the take that will make it to the record, certainly. And we all knew that in the moment, um, but we made it through the song. And we didn't really make any errors. I mean, it wasn't great, but we made it through the song. Everything was fine. And I went back into the thing and he's like, okay, now I see you needed a proof of concept. I'm like, I needed to leave here today knowing that we could play this song. Yeah. He's like, yeah, all right, now get out of here, you know, <laughs> go home. <laughs> but it was really nice to come in on Sunday with that confidence and some sleep, obviously. Uh, and, and just, you know, it was so, it was, we, we, it was such an intense couple of hours. I mean, it was an intense day, but you know, on that one song, an intense couple of hours. And then, you know, having that in my head all night, I'm sure it was true for all of us. We came in the next day and, and we were all just sort of noodling on that tune. And Chris is like, you want to start with something else? Or he's like, you guys want to do this, don't you? I was like, yeah, we want to do this. And, mm. uh, and we nailed it. It was, uh, it was so good. It was amazing. But it, that, and that really started Sunday to be like the the pinnacle of creativity for us and and collaboration we really moved as one all day on sunday and uh finished the tracking uh of the you know the basic track started doing some harmonies together some group vocals and then some individual harmonies and things like that and just the way the ideas were the, the way we were able to communicate ideas to each other was spectacular it I, I, you know, I will thank everyone that allowed us the weekend to do this, which in, includes, but is not limited to my wife, Lisa, who wound up, you know, basically spending the weekend alone, which was the first weekend. It was our kid's birthday this weekend. Our kids are both born on the same day, a couple of years apart. And uh, it was the first time that they were not home, that we were not all together on the kid's birthday. And then also I was not here. So I know that wasn't easy for her. And I know it wasn't easy for any of the family members of all the people that uh, are, you know, surround that surround the band. And, but it, this weekend, I'm thankful to everyone for affording us this opportunity to do it because it really, we did some fantastic things. I'm, I, you know, I, ask me in January again, but at this moment in time, I'm super proud of what we, we're able to accomplish this. So when can we hear something? Uh, it'll probably be January, February, by the time things are mixed. We still have, there's a couple harmony things that need to be added in. There's, you know, some, some general overdubbing that, that will happen over the next couple of weeks. Then we'll do mixing and mastering and, and out it will come. But, um, there, there might be a, a song sneaking out in early January that may or may not even be on the record, but it's, um, it's, bring it here. What's that? Bring it here. We will. We'll bring it here. It is. Uh, I. <laughs> I will warn you all. The song. The 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 song that uh, that will likely come out in early January is a song called One Six Twenty One, which, uh, if you remember what happened on One Six Twenty One, will tell you that that this song is an intensely political tune and it it's really on the nose. It it doesn't leave a whole lot to be uh, to the imagination, and it it's it's a song really just with me and Billy on it. Um, but, um, but I think that one will probably come out and it has some work. I decided when we were away for Thanksgiving that I would take a drum pad with me. I don't know if I said that on the last week's show or not, but I took one with me so that I just had sticks in my hands every day so that I wasn't coming into the studio with only four days of having sticks in my hand. I could come in with, you know, 15 days of ha having sticks in my hand. And the thing that I wound up playing on that song was there were a couple of moments where I was like, oh, I'm really glad that. I had sticks in my hand for the last three weeks <laughs> every day. So yeah, it's fun stuff. It was really, it was really, I'm sure I'll have more as I sort of decompress from it. I mean, here I am, it, we're recording this on Monday afternoon. I'm 
still just trying to catch my breath from I'm sure. This well, the yeah. photos were great. I mean, you had like that, you had that look in your eye, like you were on it. Right. Mm. But you had a huge smile, like you were loving it. And it was, it was really, you know, if a picture could tell a, a story, the the ones you shared were, were doing a good job. Well, that's good. I'm glad, man. I'm glad that that it was, yeah, no, we, I, I loved it. This was a fantastic weekend. So, all yeah. right. So I'm going to give you my, my little update because yeah. you know, I'm trying to give myself some self accountability. So, um, since, Last week when I said I, I am really focused that I'd like to become an original artist as well. So, you, you know, my life, I'm just going to give you a couple of things that have changed okay. in my life since then. Yeah. The one is I'm just jotting down a lot of ideas, just a lot of ideas. Uh, it's interesting that I cathartically find writing them is a different brain experience than typing them. But, you know, wherever they may be, it's either spoken into my phone, sung into my phone, jotted down in the notes app, or, you know, for the few times, it was, it, like I said, it was a busy weekend but it was busy week before that. If I can sit down, I just kind of sit down, just see what comes out. So that's one thing. Second thing is I'm changing my daily practice routine. So, mm. you know, I'm a cover guy, right? So most of the time I'm learning cover songs or, or refining cover songs. Sure. I am consciously trying to set aside some of my brain space and some of my time to coming up with musical ideas. So I just change what happens what, when I'm sitting down with my, with my instrument with an eye towards things. Now, and then the third thing that I did was is all of the random bits and pieces of things that I have in different places, I got them organized. So, you know, I had two dozen musical ideas in, sure. the, in the voice memos app, right? I, I put them in a folder, yep. listen to them, kind of prioritize them. And so I'm only giving you this as a, a very brief, more for my, <laughs> yeah. my own use than yours, but I'm, I feel as though I'm getting organized to approach this and I'm, you know, set aside some time through this month to actually do nothing but, you know, try and work on things. That's and amazing, man. What, that's am that's well, amazing. That's awesome. Uh, well, thanks. And, and I, I am keenly aware that am I just, am I just fluffing myself up here? You know? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm, you're, you're creating your own art. Of course you're fluffing yourself up. You have to uh, like, that's, that's no, that's part of the process. You have to, I, like you have to create or even fake until it's there. Right. People always say fake it till you make it. Um, I, I think as we get older, we learn that everybody just keeps faking it and it's fine. But you have to have some confidence that what you're going to do is going to result in something. It might not be the something you anticipated from the beginning, of course, but you, you know, it's going to be something. It might yeah. be, it might be a different something. It might be a great something. It might be an awful something, but it, you give yourself the confidence to know that it will be something and give yourself permission for it to not be what you thought it was going to be. Well, I appreciate that, but I'm, I'm kind of listening to you and thinking about what we just watched on this Beatles thing. Like, yeah, just do it, you know, just write songs. Right. I, I actually wonder if that's a better mindset than, you know, me kind of institutionalizing a bunch of processes, you know, just kind of get my well, self pointed in the right direction. As I, know. yeah, as I hear you institutionalizing your processes, I, I, I mean, we've known each other a long time. So I, I know that there's, there's part of it. That's just you, right. You like to get your ducks in a row. You like to understand what things are going to look like. You like yeah. to have some control over how things yeah. are going to proceed. But then there's also the, you know, um, analysis paralysis part of it, right? Which isn't exactly the right term, but but might be close enough where it's like, well, it, it, I, if I convince myself that I must spend four months organizing, then I don't have to start writing for four months. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so and I don't that's I don't want to do that. I understand. I totally understand. But you know why? Because it's new. You can't be an expert at this because you haven't done it before. Yeah. Like you, you, oh. you aren't current. I don't want to say you can't ever. I mean, you can't be an expert today because you've never done it before. You will eventually become an expert at it, but you know, you know, as, as well as anybody that that just takes time and, and repetition. So you got to get well, reps I'm gonna in, keep, man. I'm going to keep bringing the updates here. Cool. And, uh, so, so I figure if out there in the ether, anybody who listens to this little show, you know, is saying good for him or, you know, dude, stop talking, just start doing whatever it is. <laughs> hopefully those, those vibes will, will float to me and will push me on. But that's, that's a big goal for 2022 for me to. That's awesome, man. Feedback yeah, so. at giggabpodcast.com. Send, uh, <laughs> send your encouragement along or, or whatever you want to send along. We, we love to hear from you. So awesome. Yeah. So tell us the about thing, the house rockers, man. Yeah. 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 So the last thing I wanted to share was, uh, my Saturday morning, uh, I went to breakfast with a guy who has been subbing for us, you know, since our, our longtime guy up and moved, uh, and the plan had always been, let's try it as a long-term sub thing, make sure it wears well for each other. 
and then we'll get together and, and you know somewhere close to the first of the year let's let's figure out what it means and uh, so we started this about a month ago I I one on one called every member of my band and said hey you know I think it's time to figure out what we're going to do here what do you want to tell me and the, everybody was knocked out with Chris's playing he's That's a very right. good player. And um, they were also knocked out with his his stage. You know, he dresses great. He looks great. He sings great. He, he's a great presence on stage. He's fun. Yep. Um, and, you know, just the vibe that they got. So everybody in the band was was aligned. You know, like, yes, you know, of course. You know, why wouldn't you do this? So Time to put a ring on it. That's right. Yep. yep time to put a ring on it. So uh, I called Chris a couple weeks ago, said, hey, I'm going to be back in town. Let's go to breakfast. Let's talk this thing through. And he, he was great. And uh, we went to breakfast, and I just thought it'd be you know good to kind of, in a broad sense, kind of share the way I handled this because it should be useful to somebody out there. And in in the essence, I I'm cautious about that. This is a a job offer, yet there still is a little bit of hierarchy involved in this, right? There still right. is a formality to it. So, but I had a list of four or five. Uh, things that I thought should be discussed. I was fairly sure I knew what the answers would be to these things, but I, I, I felt it important that the process, and that's, this is really the essence of it. The essence of this is him and I looking each other in the eye and talking through the potential things that could get in the way of having a great relationship. Yep. And, you know, if nothing else, we can refer back to that conversation, right? I'm not putting it in writing, you know. No, not, but having that conversation, you both know you had that conversation and and this isn't, the kind of thing that is even remotely unlikely to end up in court, right? Like, so I, I, I'm a big fan of contracts so that you can avoid problems in the future, right? Where you, like, you do exactly what you're talking about, where you, you talk about all the things, you talk about what, you know, what the pitfalls might be, how you might navigate around those. And then when there's a question, you know, uh, about the business down the road, you look and you're like, OK, well, OK, this person says they, they you know, they shouldn't be doing this work. Let's look back at our, our agreement. Who's yep. doing what? Ah, OK, this is what we agreed to at the beginning. Now, you know, clearly one of us wants to make a change, but let's make a change while we're honoring the beginning. It's great to have that in writing, but you don't need it in writing in all circumstances. And it sounds like this is one of those where you it, it wouldn't matter if it's in writing or not. So, yeah. Cool. I, yeah. I think so. so. Yeah. Uh, I also was reflecting, you know, on the on the drive there and afterwards, because it was a great conversation. It was frank and it was specific. And, you know, I, I'm going to give you a couple of details. Of it. Sure. But I was thinking about how, you know, so many bands are collections of convenience. You kind of get the not even the best person, but you kind of take the most willing person at the time. You know, you, sometimes it starts with a, with a group of friends who say, yeah. hey, we should form a band. Yeah. Sometimes it's a Craigslist ad and, you know, you're picking the, sometimes it's the lesser of many evils or, or, the, or the most qualified of all the people. But, you know, how many people really go through 10 people to find the one that they want? How many people audition 10 people to, you know, figure out who it's going to be? And so, I, I, and as I see other bands, most of them start with a collection of friends or or people who know each other and say let's let's do something and then they fill in and that how they fill in often determines the fate of the band whether they're really careful about it right whether they're really thoughtful about it so having gone through this a few times and i think i've shared like in my band um the hardest spot has been the other guitar player spot, yeah right we've been through many some of them were not qualified yet but were really nice people and you know it was it was they were they made you feel good to be around them but it wasn't they weren't up to the musical task at hand right uh some of them one of them took the gig on, after a very specific conversation that this is you know this is how much you can expect to sing and this is how it's going to go and within a few weeks of their joining the band you know decided they wanted to be their band and and it just created a weird thing <laughs> weird. another guy yeah. was just uh, another guitar player was just very good player just a difficult cat from the beginning. Sure. And actually, well, you know, he was the one who was there before Simon. And when, when it was time to replace him, and Simon was one of the guys that came. So Simon was coming from the East Coast. He was he had a wedding band uh, experience on his credentials. He knew a lot of our stuff. Um, I got a great gut from Simon right from the beginning, but there was still some discussion in the band 
you know, do we really need two guitar players? Should we add a female singer? Should, you know, a lot of things that were taking us out into left field. Yep. But, uh, you know, Simon was probably the culmination of, of better developed intuition, better knowing what questions to ask. Like the guy who I was telling you about who, you know, was kind of horrible to play with. Um, he was a very good player. We should have known when he came for his audition, he only learned two of the four songs I asked him to learn. He killed on the two and he showed great chops, but he wasn't. 100 percent prepared for it he was like this is as much work as i'm willing to do for this yeah there's a that there's a been... there's a p there's a nonverbal part of the conversation there that's right, right. yep <laughs> right yep so my conversations with chris um and I'm, again i'm gonna be you know re with respect to him so chris is a well-known guy in, in this local scene great chops great resume you know just very well-known guy right and and it was cool he had been an admirer of our band uh, for quite a while and, you know, respected the guy who we had. We were starting off in a pretty cool place, right? So the question to ask was, he's also a techie guy and he has a, he has a really good day job. And the first question was, you know, a lot of our downbeats are, you know, 6 to 6.30 p.m. on Thursday nights. Are you going to be able to do that in the summer? Oh, and, yeah. you know, what would be the ones that would be hard? And we had a frank discussion. He goes, you know, we had one gig over this past time that he was with us, where it was about two hours away, that uh, sound check was like a 3.30 or 4 for a 6 p.m. downbeater. And he goes, that you know that caused me a bit of an issue. But you know what? If it's one per summer, I can use vacation time. I can figure it out. It's not It's not a problem. And okay. I had I had to look him in the eye and say, I can't imagine it would be more than one per summer. Mo you know, history shows that we really don't have a lot of that. Yeah. This was one gig pretty far away. We were trying to expand our audience up into that area closer to Sacramento, and um, I uh, it was a, it was a concert series that had a really good reputation, big draw. Um, we went; it didn't pay very well. It, it, we went, we played, we killed. They asked us about the next year, and you know, I've asked for basically twice you know the money to make it worthwhile. Sure, that would be the only one. So anyway, availability, a reality check, availability was the first thing that we talked about. Okay, yep. Second thing we talked about was, um, you know, how do we handle conflict, right? So, you know, over the course of time, there were a couple bumps, not bad bumps, but bumps. And uh, I am keenly aware from my perch that the people involved with the bumps saw it slightly differently. Again, this is not terrible stuff, but it was more like, you know, what would you do if, if it was a really bad bump? You know, how would, how would you handle it? And it was really keen to hear his answer. Um, and he was like, I'm a big boy, you know, bumps happen. Um, communication is, you know, basically he just kind of checked off the, what I would say if asked that question. Sure. And again, Chris and I, maybe because we both are event people, you know, we have with technical, you know, backgrounds, yep. we have connected as friends for a while. So this conversation was a very good soul touching conversation, probably different than it would be if I didn't know who the guy was. Right. Of you course. Know, like I, I, of course. So anyway. So anyway, you know, check that one. Great answer. Onward we go. The one that I thought was going to be the hardest was actually, you know, he, Chris can sing. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, to me, there's a whole mix of delicate things that are going, right? So I think I've talked about sharing the ball. <laughs> you yeah. know, I already have three, three good singers. And um, the, technically the offer is for you to be to join the band as a bass player, right? Right. And the answer um, – I I had to get my head in the right place to say, you know what? He can negotiate this, right? You know, it, he, what he wants is important to this as well. So, you know, where I started on a process was I'm offering you this. I can't offer you that. Yeah. But as I thought about it for the past month, I was like, well, you know, where, where actually is the line? You know, not, not my perceived line that I was, and it, this has nothing to do with Chris. This is all me. Yeah. Not the old what, line. Where's the new line? Yeah. But where my perceived line was, I'm offering you this and you're making me, you're making me negotiate. I don't want to negotiate. Right. And so the lesson learned where there's like, to, like I had to check myself and be like, well, you know, listen, I get a lot of upside and that's why I'm asking him to join the band. He may want something. Right. Right. It's not just my offer is the only thing for him to consider. And and even saying this out loud, I probably sound like a huge dick that, that even started in the place <laughs> that I thought that that's what the conversation was going to be. But literally, I was just kind of like digging in, like, we've got singers, we, you know, you know, we have a great flow, all those types of things. And his answer here was actually made me love the guy even more. I mean, it was just very thoughtful. He was like, I would like to. It's not a deal breaker. 
mostly what's important to me is that what I do add to what you do. It's not just that I, I want to sing, so you should give it to me. He goes, it needs to be something that will add to what you do. And I'm like, like, uh, can I, if I didn't get in trouble for leaning across the table and kissing the guy with Chris himself or with the other people in the restaurant, <laughs> I would have done it because that is, that is the, the magic answer. What's best for the band, right? Yeah. It's the Joe Walsh answer, man. Like, yep. right. Like, the, yes, I totally agree. Uh, and it's nice working with people. I mean, I think a lot of this comes with maturity, doesn't always. And and that goes in both directions. You can find young people who who see that vision. I certainly didn't see it as well as I see it now when I was younger. Uh, but you can also find people that, that, you know, lack that awareness and never get to see it. But that's the that's the key. What's the best thing for the band? What's, you know, being able to look at the whole of it and say, OK, what can I add to this right. that makes the whole thing better? And yes, there can be selfishness in there. I have a great idea. I think we should do it. You know, that it is a collaboration and, and hopefully the sum is greater than the parts. And I honestly, I think musical collaborations are where that phrase really actually is true. So, or can be true. Uh, it can be true in other places too, but it seems to be even more true, more frequently true in musical collaborations Yes, where, you know, where you really are adding things. Um, I'm reminded of, of that, that crazy tune with that crazy drum part. Um, there was one, there is one moment of the tune where Billy goes from playing just a kind of a, uh, a, a straight time bass line to a double time walking bass line. And it literally nothing about my drum part changes. Like it, it is exactly the same thing. Basically, it's exactly the same thing throughout the song. And as soon as he does that, it makes the whole song sound like everybody is playing something different. It was like, wow, that's really amazing. I mean, really, all he did was double the double the frequency of the number of notes he's playing. Right. I mean, I, you know, I'm oversimplifying it here, but mm -hmm. but that's, you know, you zoom out to 10,000 feet. That's what happened. And, and like, that's amazing that those things can happen. And, and, but you need to be able to see the big picture because if it, in that moment, if Billy was playing, you know, double time all the way through the song, you wouldn't ever notice it because it would just become part of the noise of the song, right? It would be the, the foundation of it as opposed to, holy crap, here's this crazy thing that happens and it really opens it up. So, um, having someone in the, that you're bringing into your band that can see things like that and say, yep. what's the best, not what can I do, but what can I do to help what this, what is happening here and what these other people are doing. And, and, and hopefully that's obviously a two way street, but, but it sounds like you've paved a two way street with this guy. And that is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, anybody can say what's good for the band. And I think that's a trite thing that, <laughs> yes. that could come out of someone's mouth. Sure. You know, but, but he really, he, we were talking about the commitment we were about to make to each other in terms of what his role would be in the group. Again, if he comes in and he's like, you know, if it's different, then. Well, you have another it, conversation. It, it exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So the last thing was really kind of interesting. We have less time together as a, as a band to rehearse now. Right. And right? so we had a conversation about risk versus reward versus some choices that I would make. For mm. example, uh, when we did that Halloween gig, I told the band, these three songs, you're on your own. We're going to sound check them and we're going to play them. You're expected to come and bring it. Yep. And while we were doing that, we had one where there was a disconnect, right? Um, and it, in many cases, it probably, you know, y y your own level about what where a song has to be before you are ready to perform it on stage in front of people, th that's a line for many people. I was talking about, this is a Halloween show. Well, in this case, I'm saying this is a Halloween show. This is a Halloween song. It would go over great. It would make people smile. This little rough four bars is probably not going to train record. I'm willing to take the risk on it. Sure. So, can you, can you, you, do you understand what I'm kind of yeah. saying? It's like, yep. you know, would I rather woodshed it and, you know, polish all the edges? Absolutely. But in this moment, given the amount of time our band has, given what I know our band's capabilities are, I'm going to go ahead and make the call. And I observed his reaction to that. And his reaction, again, he's going to listen to this. And so I, I want to make sure I get this right. His reaction, I can almost, 
get in his head that he was saying, all right, I wouldn't make this choice, Yep. but I'm not a full-time guy in the band right now, so I'm going to hold back. But I could read all this stuff kind of like, he didn't, he didn't roll his eyes. He just kind of like, he checked himself, right? Yep. I, I could, that, and, <laughs> it was, it was one, one step short of the passive aggressive. Well, if that's what you think is best, you know. <laughs> Right, one step short of he wasn't being passive aggressive. No, no, that's what I mean. It was saying, it was all of the my, thought not process. My hill to die on. Yeah, not my right. All of the thought process up to and including the decision not to say those words. That's right. Right. Yep, yep I got you. Yeah. And um uh, I asked him, you know, those situations will come up from time to time. And I, I know you, Chris, like you you prepare. Like, you know, like you are you are particular about the details and stuff like that. And this was a discussion about I'm going to make some choices every once in a while about risk versus reward. Like if something in the moment is going to have us go over, you know, and give someone a memorable moment, but it's not musically perfect. Are we willing to take that? And, you know, sometimes I will be willing to take that. Can you be okay with that? Because, you know, he's one of those guys who he polishes the edges. I mean, right. he, he, he works, he works, he works, he, you know, he comes prepared. And, you know, there are many musicians who they, that is not an acceptable position to them. That's right. I don't want to yeah. play anything, that, you know, the level of, uh, the level of grief that they feel about it, whether they feel embarrassed or ashamed or whatever it might be by not having something musically perfect. But, you know, again, I'm, uh, and I get that and I respect that Nick is kind of that way, right? You know, he's, he's persnickety about stuff, right? Um, but I also, you know, firmly believe that the decisions I make are pay off for us in many ways. And, um, and so I, you know, I am, I'm not careless about making those decisions, but, uh, I am purposeful about making those decisions. So, uh, but I'm going to make those decisions. Sure. And I wanted to, I wanted to find out how crazy that would make him. And so we had a conversation about that. I'm not actually going to share too much of the details about it other than it was, you know, it, it was, it was a good response and, and we were connected, but I just think that that point right there is interesting. And you know what, you know, you and I have talked about whether we would play together in a group a certain many times. And, you know, you said you will say, I will make you crazy, Paul. And I was like, no, you wouldn't, you know, I know you, I, I play with you. Right. 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 Even though it's, it's occasional, Yeah, yeah. but how, how would you have handled that conversation? Was you and me across the table and me saying, you know, I may make musical decisions that you will disagree with, uh, you know, for these reasons, what, what would your response have been? Um, I, I will share my thoughts with you because that's who I am, but it doesn't mean that I'm not hearing you. And, and mm -hmm. it's, if it's your band and we all know that coming in, then the buck stops with you. Got it. I, right. I mean, like that's yeah. the, like, I, I, I'm, I, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to you and say, "Oh, I'll agree with everything that you that you suggest." No, no, but right? you, would you say, "I would you say I don't roll that way"? Would you would you say like you know, quality per perfection is our should be our goal, which is an answer. I don't know if it's the right answer, or the sure. best answer, it's, but it is an answer. Like, no, I really think you know, I take my music very seriously, yeah. and you know, if I'm going to put it on stage, I want it to be right. So it's a, we, it's a valid answer. I mean, we it, we all have our our bar like you said the, the the minimum that we would prefer to be on stage with the minimum we are willing to be on stage with right like you know it's all there and and it's for me that bar is fluid right it it very much depends on the gig and like the 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 moment and all of it like there's there's times where i've played things on stage that were just horrible but in the context of where the gig was it was absolutely the right thing to do, right? Like it, 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 it enhanced and it entertained. And, you know, in that moment, that was the right thing. So I, where I, I, I wouldn't, I can't imagine what a scenario would look like where a one time decision that I disagreed with in terms of a, you know, this is ready to play. This isn't ready to play. Uh, would be the the hill I would die on to to borrow that phrase, mm -hmm. but you know if it happened five or six times, then I would I would come back and have want to have a conversation like, hey, I think we're going in a direction that that I, that isn't serving what I would like to do. Talk to me about this. Like, why do we keep cool. doing this over and over yeah. again? You know that and kind that's, of thing. That's a that's, that's a pro pro response. I get it. Yeah, Chris Chris's was. A mix of many of the things that you said. So anyway, yeah, it was a good conversation. Good. Yeah. And then there actually was one last thing, and it was just more about how our band communicates and makes decisions. And so 
I, I kind of went through this thing, like, you know, as a band member, your input is valued. You know, you need to speak up. I, you know, I love good discourse. I talked about this concept, you know, you and I have used this phrase about playing the leader card. You know, I said, I try to very judiciously when it, when I finally find there is something, but often I have nine different opinions on something and, you know, we got to yeah. move decisions. So, you know, and you've observed a large part of what our vibe is type of thing. So yes, I'm the leader of the band. Um, Yes, I value input, and I want people to you know talk through things. I I said my my mantra is this: one, civility; two, these are your bros. We are all on the same page, wanting a similar outcome, and we need to treat it like a brotherhood, right? And three, you know, but it is okay to passionately defend your position on things. That's right. you know, good. Good. Good things happen when people do that. And and I said I'll break ties if I have to. And, and it's kind of interesting because. Uh, the guy that Chris is replacing was kind of our musical referee. Like when we had, a, you said a, that, yeah, yeah, and uh, and Chris was, you know, acknowledging that as well. And you know, again, he's a very bright guy and he's a very experienced musician. This is not his first rodeo by any mean, right? And I'm, you know, that I'm getting the benefit of that. I just wanted him. It was a good thing to look us in the eyes and say, "I break ties often. I encourage the discourse as long as it's civil." Um, and you know. You know, we 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 work through things together as a as a unit, and you know that's how it goes. The, and this is how I run my the leadership things, and this is how it all works. And so I like it. And yeah, yeah. I mean, so, you, no. you know, you've the nice part is, while technically the guy hasn't been a member of the band, certainly his involvement in the band has been expanding and growing, and his his ties to the band, his bonds to the band have been growing, you know, over the summer, right? I mean, you played a lot of gigs together, whether, yeah. whether you offered him the gig or not, he would always be a part of the house rockers, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, he's, 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 you've had shared crises together. Like that's the key. Yeah. And, and so you weren't having this conversation in a vacuum, right? You, you know, this guy, both inside the band and outside the band, you've become friendly with him, you know, all of that stuff. So, you know, you're, you're not having to interpret his words lacking any context of who he is. So I think you're doing, I mean, I think it's honestly, I think you're, you're doing exactly what I do. I would do if I were in your shoes, you are massively overthinking this, which is great. It's what uh, makes this show great. Like we, we, we both come in and we, we over dissect this stuff and it's awesome. It's great. Well, for me, you know, I also, I really love the guy and you know, our yeah. friendship, you know, we had some musical connections before, sure. but we would talk about life and tech jobs and event, yeah. you know, he's an event guy and it would be beyond a tragedy if bad communication led to hard feelings that would hurt a pretty good friendship. Right. Yep. And so, you know, hopefully this will enhance a pretty good friendship and, you know, take it to a, a much deeper place. That would be my preference and my goal and, you know, what I hope turns out. But Net net, you know, I think it was a good conversation. I did overthink it. I think he appreciated the overthinking. Of course, I think, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. again, he's kind of wired like you and I in that way. And um, but mostly, I'm thrilled. I shared it with the band on our Slack thing, and you know, they all wished him well and welcomed him. It was really nice to see that happening. They all knew it was coming. And then I sure. posted on Facebook this morning, and you know, little news from the band that you know he's joined the band permanently. A lot of people are reaching out, which is really wonderful to see. And I'm just thrilled. Again, great, great guy. Great chops, um, experienced, wonderful on stage. I mean, there are really, there's no downsides to it. So it's, uh, it, it's all blue sky from here. That's amazing, man. Congratulations. That, that's awesome. I'm, I'm stoked for you and for the band and for him. Like, I think this is, it's, this is great. It's cool. you've survived. Well, let's, I mean, let, let, let's wrap it up real fast, right? You've survived. Uh, a, a pandemic as a band, like the band survived the pandemic. Yes. Okay. Uh, you survived a, the relocation of a member of the band and specifically the leader of the band. Right. And you figured out you've, you've navigated those waters and figured out how to, how to deal with that. And I know there's still more to do there, but sure. Like so far, so good success. And you've um, navigated and successfully, successfully navigated replacing two members of your rhythm section in not that long of a period of time. That's right. right. Your, your, I, I, drum, your drummer and your yeah, bass player. You're freaking me out, man. I didn't, I, I've never really thought about how much change has been injected into this group. In the last massive, massive amount of change just from when we started the show, really just in the last half of what this show has been. So like, yeah, like you're, you're doing a good thing, man. I think it's great. And Thanks. then, uh, you know, next year you're going to, 
tell all the guys that the House Rockers is becoming an all original outfit. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Sorry. <laughs> well, hey, what do you think about, um, you know, we talked a little bit about touring and stuff. You know, my buddy Nick, we sh- we, would you be cool if we invited Nick on the show? He's trying to put together a tour for Stinkfoot. Oh, that'd you know, be his amazing. Napa group. Yeah. Oh, it'd be great so, to get Nick on the show. Oh, I'd love that. That'd be a, that'd be a fun, probably really easy conversation. And we'll apologize that it went three hours. So there you go. Yeah. All right. That'd be great. Do it. I'd love to have him right, on man. the show. Good. On right. Folks, yes, onward and upward. Let us know how things are going for you. Uh, let us know what you think about any of this stuff. Let us know any questions you have, any gear. I know it's been a couple of weeks since we've done gear. I have some stuff to talk about here. So we're, we're there. We're there. We just have had other things. So, you know, it's how it goes sometimes. Thanks for listening, folks. And um, we'll see you next week, right? What is that thing we try to do? What do we say? What must we do? I forget. We let Chris Beveridge always be performing. Always. Welcome, Chris.